We're here at the Benchmark Bank. You just saw moments ago, we stepped out of our vehicle, which is across the street where my cameraman Josh is. We came across the street to the Benchmark Bank. We were immediately approached by an officer. He said, sir, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just here to speak to the bank manager. He said, well, they prefer that you call before you come. Well, I said, well, I'm not looking for a problem, officer. Can you go get the bank manager for me? The officer agreed, so that's what we're doing now. So you saw just moments ago, we were approached by both an officer and a representative of the Benchmark Bank. Now, the reason why we're here is because last Friday, a gentleman tried to enter the bank after the bank had been robbed. Obviously, the gentleman did not know this. Keep in mind, the gentleman who came to the bank after it had been robbed did not match the description of the suspect at all. The gentleman presented identification to the bank. Then an officer approached the man. The man did not want to talk to the officer, decided to walk away from the situation. That walk turned into a run. A foot chase ensued. The officer eventually caught up to the man at a nearby park. There was an alleged struggle and somehow or another the man ended up with a bullet in the back of his neck. First of all, do you think it was the appropriate response of your officer to chase the man? Yes, the police department does have a uh pursuit policy, a foot pursuit policy that dictates when our officers uh, can be engaged. The foot chase ended under the uh, Shoal Creek Bridge over off of 34th Street and uh, their struggle ensued under that bridge. During the foot pursuit, uh, Detective Kleiner did enlist the aid of a motorist to uh, help him catch back up to Mr. Jackson. Do you know at what point the officer removed his holster? Was it knocked out? Did he pull it out? Do you know exactly what happened? That's still part of the ongoing investigation. But as far as striking an unarmed man in the back, uh, in the back of the neck, do you think that's justified? Uh, I can't speculate on that. Is the officer involved still in active duty? Yes, the officer, uh, per our standard policy, is on restricted duty with pay. Now, it's my understanding that the gentleman has some type of false identification. Can you specify what that is? Again, due to the ongoing nature of the investigation, there are some pieces that we're not releasing. We have this ongoing investigation as far as, you know, when the officer unholstered his weapon when exactly he fired the weapon, but you're pretty confident in saying that he was there, the gentleman was there to commit a fraud. Does his prior history have anything to do with that conclusion? We have not released uh, Mr. Jackson's full criminal history. We don't want to, we're not attempting to uh, challenge his credibility. Anytime a life is lost, it's tragic. And uh, it's tragic for Mr. Jackson's family. As a law enforcement family, it's tragic for us. Our officer is, uh, you know, having a hard time with this as well. Now, I can't help but notice the similarities between this case and the George Zimmerman Trayvon Martin case, whereas the person with the gun aggressively pursued the person without the gun, and when an altercation ensued, the person with the gun opened fire. And that just so happens to be the cover story on this month's InfoWars magazine, available at the InfoWars shop. And as always, remember to film the police. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News.